For the people of Enniskillen, the past year has been a difficult one, and still the tragedy lingers. Local schoolmaster Ronnie Hill remains unconscious in hospital, a constant reminder of last year's horror. Pamela Gardner reports. Sunday, November the 8th, 1987. An IRA bomb explodes at the War Memorial in Enniskillen Town Centre, minutes before a Remembrance Day service is due to get underway. Eleven men and women who came to remember the war dead are killed. Sixty more are injured. It was described as a watershed of violence in Northern Ireland. A year after the explosion, this busy market town appears to be back to normal. But for many people here in Enniskillen, life will never be the same. 16-year-old Stephen Ross fishes peacefully in Loch Erne on the outskirts of Enniskillen. He was one of those caught under a wall brought crashing down by the bomb. He suffered pelvic, leg and head injuries and had to wear a surgical cage on his face for five weeks. I've come a long way since last November. I, all my facial injuries have healed. I've every bone in my face broken, so that's all healed. And my leg has healed very well. I won't be able to play football or rugby for a long time, maybe. I may never be able to play football or rugby. I don't know. The doctors are not really sure. But you found a new hobby, fishing. Yes, I do quite a lot of fishing. It's, it's quite a good way of taking up time and it's quite relaxing. While Stephen's injuries have curtailed his lifestyle, they've broadened his outlook. It's made me realise how fortunate I am to be alive and how good God's been to me and how lucky I am to have every moving part of my body. There's no bitterness there? No, I don't feel bitter in any way. I, there's nothing to be gained, really, from bitterness. Each day since the explosion, Noreen Hill has visited her husband, Ronnie, here at the Urn Hospital in Enniskillen. Mrs Hill didn't accompany her husband to the remembrance service as usual last year because she was recovering from cancer. Now the once bright and active headmaster is in a comatose state, having suffered bomb blast lung and has little chance of recovery. Well, medically, the doctors say there's no chance. I mean, they tell us that he could be like this for 15, 20 years, for the rest of his natural life. But we believe in miracles. Mrs Hill spends up to 12 hours each day with her husband, who now cannot move or speak. I read to Ronnie and I talk to him and uh, I play tapes for him. And I arrange flowers. It's been a devastating blow to your family. How have you been able to cope over the past year? The Lord has carried us through. Um, we couldn't do it on our own strength. I don't think anyone could come through what we as a family have come through on their own strength. Cross-community support has also helped the Hills. We have and had a lot of friends, uh, Catholic friends, very good friends. And I mean, they're still very good friends. In the future, Mrs Hill hopes to live in a purpose-built house, which can be home again for her and her husband. Later today, relatives of the 11 people killed in the explosion will lay a wreath of 11 roses here at the War Memorial in memory of their loved ones. Pamela Gardner, TVAM, Enniskillen. Well, members of the Enniskillen community who were injured in the blast and bereaved relatives will gather today for a private church service to remember those who lost their lives. Now, taking part in that service will be Enniskillen's Presbyterian Minister, the Reverend David Couples, who joins us now from our Belfast studio. Good morning to you, Mr Couples. Uh, good morning. Uh, one year on, uh, this must be a sombre time for the people of Enniskillen. Very much so. Um, I'm waiting with some apprehension to discover what atmosphere will be in the town when I go back there after this programme. It will certainly be very sad, and I think there will be a certain hush and a kind of reverence about the town today as people think back on the events of last year. Yes, you knew, didn't you, personally, all the people that died and were injured uh, in the explosion. Uh, there must be still an air of unreality for you as well. Yes, just listening to Stephen Ross and to Noreen there, they're both members of my congregation, moves me deeply and brings back the events. And of course, I've lived through the past year with them all. I didn't know everyone who died and was injured, but um, there were six people from my congregation who, who died and about another six who were seriously injured. And this period has been difficult for me and for us all as we've relived these events. Yes, Gordon Wilson provided, didn't he, a remarkable example of mental bravery 
and resilience. Have you sensed that uh, quiet courage amongst the people of Enniskillen in the, la in the last year? Undoubtedly. Um, <clears throat> there's been a remarkable degree of restraint, a remarkable degree of calm, a lot of courage, and a lot of people would go along with Noreen Hill in saying that they haven't accomplished this in their own strength, but have found God to be very real and very important to them in the past year. Yes, for, for you and for all men of the cloth, it is a difficult time because you have to explain that most mysterious uh, equation, don't you? What is the role of God in all this? Uh, have you not found scepticism and cynicism creeping in? Well, I wouldn't say scepticism and cynicism. I think the obvious question that you've mentioned there, why does God allow this to happen, has been asked almost universally. But at the same time, when people are asking a question like that, they are remarkably receptive to what uh, a minister will say and to what the Bible will say. And I found that my congregation were very eager to listen to my preaching at that time and to accept the fact that God was in control, even though we might not be able to see how his purposes were being worked out and how he was immediately involved. There's always a, a profound irony, isn't there, following these tragedies, and that it takes sometimes tragedies like Ennis Killing to bring out the very best in human nature. Have you noticed that remarkable sort of welding effect uh, on the community of Ennis Killing? Yes, I think uh, a really major catastrophe like this it divides people. It brings out both the worst and the best. And I find in Enniskillen that the attitudes that people held prior to the explosion have been very much confirmed and deepened. I don't think there's been a very widespread change of opinion, but certainly it is lovely and it is a sign of hope to see people who, after an event like this, when we're all feeling deeply morally outraged, to see them saying that this is a, a sign that we must work all the harder for reconciliation and for a change of heart on behalf of the community at large. And finally, to come back to Gordon Wilson, that remarkable message from Gordon Wilson about the message of forgiveness, uh, was that message spread through Ennis Gillen? Did you sense that coming from other quarters as well? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, there are certainly those in the community who would not go along with Gordon Wilson, and that would have to be said. But I think also he has had a degree of support that one might not have expected. And certainly as a Christian, I believe that uh, Christians are called to forgive those who do them wrong and that God extends his forgiveness to you if they're willing to turn from their sin. And I think that we have unquestionably felt a, a remarkable atmosphere in the town over the past year and a great deal of help from one another and from our faith in God. The memories that are recent day bombing. The Presbyterian Church here lost six members of its congregation. The survivors came to the memorial today to lay a wreath to commemorate the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, and the brothers they lost one year ago today. There was hope that the tragedy of Enniskillen would prove to be some form of watershed in the catalogue of killings by the IRA, but the last 12 months has shown how vain that hope was. One man pulled from this rubble is still in hospital, his lungs blasted by the bomb, his brain permanently damaged. Headmaster Ronnie Hill no longer shows any sign of recognition for his wife, who tends him at his bedside every day. Medically. There's no hope for Ronnie. Ronnie is going to be, medically, he'll be the way he is now. And he could live 15, 20 years. He could live the rest of his natural life, whatever that would be. But also, he could die tomorrow. One of his pupils, Stephen Ross, had his face so badly smashed by the bomb, it had to be held together by a steel cage. He's made a remarkable recovery. Well, it's really very difficult, but I try to forgive as best as I can. Really, um, I don't really know the people. I can't forgive them when I don't know who they are. And really, it's not up, for me to, up, to, up to me to judge really what they did. The survivors of the Inniskillin Poppy Day bombing, one year on. Dixon is still living with the pain and disfigurement the bomb caused to his face. Every time I hear of a tragedy, somebody shot, somebody blown up, it saddens me to an awful extent that the lack of this can be carried on in a country like this. I can't listen to it on any.